Today I will be investigating why my front left wheel sinks after I park. I suspect this is either a bad valve body or a leaking airline because I've already replaced the strut and that didn't fix the issue. I jacked up the front of the car and put jack stands under the two front jack points just behind the front wheels, which you can't see. And then I removed the front right wheel. The aromatic compressor and valve body are located in the front right fender just behind the front bumper, so that's why I'm removing the inner fender liner right now so I can access them from the wheel well. Huge shout out to Mercedes for making plastic nuts. Those are just fantastic. That's what you need to hold on a wheel well because you get about two uses out of them and then they strip. All right, so I had to remove the uh, inner fender, which is sitting right there. And once you do that, you can kind of see the key components of the system. Uh, right here, we've got the compressor. And then right above it, buried back here, is the level control unit, also called the valve block. Let's see if I can get a better look at that. All right, so right there, you can see the colored uh, airlines that go to it. Uh, there's four, one for each wheel, one for the compressor, and one for the accumulator tank. So this valve block uh, has solenoids in it that control the flow of air to the different parts of the car. And I'm hoping that one of the airline connectors to uh, the valve block here is leaking, because that would explain this issue. All right, we're gonna give this a shot. I'm gonna try to take these off and kind of wiggle this whole bracket down. And hopefully it'll give me enough room to unscrew this and slide the valve body to the right, because right now this bar is in the way. Most cars don't have this, and I don't know what this is, but I'm going to treat it very carefully, and hopefully I don't cause more problems than I try to solve. Once I got those two long Torx bolts removed, I was able to pivot this random pump out of the way and kind of rest it on the inner fender liner. With the valve body detached and this pump out of the way, I was able to rotate a bit and get better access to the brass fittings. I used a 10mm wrench to loosen them and start to drain the air out of the aromatic system. slowly drain while I undo the next one. At this point I've got all the fittings loosened and the air is draining out of all four struts and the central reservoir. I didn't notice it at the time but with the air leaking out of the struts at an uneven rate the car was actually changing how level it was so you can kind of see this in the time lapse. Oh, come on, Mercedes, why is one a different size? There's six. Five or ten millimeter, and one's a twelve millimeter. That's just mean. All right, I don't think this video is very good quality, so I'll just do a quick update. Basically, I'm working through removing all the hose lines, cracking them a bit, letting the air bleed out, and then fully removing the lines. And you've got a decent amount of access up to the bottom here once you detach these bolts and kind of swing this out. I've got this resting on the lip here with a box under it in case it does fall, but there's really not much stress on these high pressure lines, so I think it's an okay system all in all. Uh, still haven't been able to get the valve body out of the car yet, so I'm going to disconnect the airlines and work from there. At this point I disconnected the front right line and you can see the shock move up for some reason as the air is drained out. Not sure why that happens, but it did. And then I began removing the electrical connector for the valve block. Alright, this is my least favorite part of car repairs. So I'm going to try and have this make sense. Basically, you've got this plug here, and it slides in this way, under this part. And if you stick your 
flathead screwdriver right in behind this part and pry a bit, you'll release the latch and then you can jam the screwdriver into the seam and pry off the, the uh, connector. God, no wires are damaged. All right. Look at that. That is one Mercedes valve body. All right, so this is the old valve body on a steel bracket. And this is the Arnott valve body, just with the plastic housing, so we'll need to transfer the housing over. The metal bracket is held on by two torque screws. It's pretty intuitive how it's held on and how you transfer it over to the new valve block. All right, there's our new valve body. All right, so you can kind of see it here, but as I was putting this back in, it wasn't seating properly, and it looks like there is a fracture in this line right where it uh, mates with the ceiling surface. Now that's interesting because that's green and that's vehicle front left, and that's the one that was failing. I decided to trim off the first inch or so of airline that was defective and had the crack, and then see if this one would seat into the valve body. All right, this is not coming. Can I just cut this off? Oh, apparently yes you can. All right, one more practice cut, just to see if I can get it straight. All right, all right. Well, let's give that a try. After I trimmed that airline, I tried to reinsert it into the push to connect fitting, but it wouldn't stay. I think Arnott's fitting was defective. I wound up just taking one of the fittings from the old valve block, putting the collet back on the tube, and then screwing uh, the brass fitting back into the new valve body. So at the end of the day, I've got five Arnott push to connect fittings in the new valve body, and then one old, uh, old style Mercedes fitting holding on the front left airline. Um, this is all screwed back in, the sensor is plugged in, I'm going to put this back up on here, and then I suppose we'll see if it works. As always, install is the reverse of removal. Alright, that's solid. Compressor's there, still shaky, but I hope that's normal. Holy crap, I think we're done. Wow. I forgot to record a few key parts here, so here's some video footage of a couple cute ducks. At this point, I put the wheel back on the car, and I lowered the front jack so that the front tires were um, more or less at ride height. At that point, I started the engine, and I gave the compressor a few minutes to get air in the struts, and then slowly lowered them the rest of the way. At that point, the air suspension started raising, and it raised the car up to the correct ride level. This is an important step because you never want to pressurize the struts when there's no weight on them. Doing so could damage the air bladders. All right, the repair is completed. I haven't driven it yet, but I'm allowing myself to feel cautiously optimistic. It's been about 10, 15 minutes and the car is still level. It hasn't sunk at all on this tire, so that's good. And the rear inflated properly. I think this is looking promising. I'm going to take it for a test drive soon and I'll know for certain. The next day I went for a 7 hour cross state road trip and there were no problems so I think this fixed the aromatic issues. I hope you find this video useful. Uh, please leave a comment if you have any questions.